Ah, ah, Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 1570, 1570, and I am Mike Matthews broadcasting from. Wait a minute. Did I not number these right? No, I'm sorry. It's 1569. 1569. Summer of 69. I'm your host, Brian Adams. Welcome to Mike's Daily Podcast, located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, Mott, the last place on earth. Today it's Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and Mike's Daily Podcast. The Brewmaster. Oh my gosh. I have to tell you that when I was Mike's Daily Podcast. Th- saying something here that made it sound like I was saying something here and then there was something I didn't what there was an alleged Olympic hack that's crazy that Hmm. well my question to you is why Mike's daily podcast I'm all confused today on today's show So I hope this isn't a show that's trying to be a example of how I usually am. Russia hacked the Olympics and tried to pin the blame on North Korea. Is that true? What? According to Vanity Fair, on February 9th, a cyber attack against the Winter Olympics computer servers threw the Olympics, the opening ceremony into minor chaos with disruptions to the internet and broadcast systems. Hmm. Look who just walked in. Hi, Ma! It's Benita the Rodeo Queen! How y'all doing? You look like a succulent baby lamb. And it's a disgruntled fiddle player tell you what. What? I'm glad that those Olympics are over with because I do not care about any sports that take place in the snow because I am... A disgruntled fellow player person and I'm gonna keep talking because I like the sound of my own voice. Busted eardrums. No, you're not. Unlike this guy I'm hearing on one of the stations I'm working for. He just talks and talks and loves to hear I love to hear the sound of my own voice. He's filling in for Hugh Hewitt. Who I like Hugh Hewitt. I've met Hugh Hewitt and he talks to the politicians. And even though he's a conservative, there's sometimes I'm like, hey, yeah, that's he, he's he's thinking. He's always thinking and not blindly following. And I appreciate that. And here's today's podcast picture. And he chastises when he he chastises some of the politicians he has on. And he'll have on who's the guy that hosts the Face the Nation? Not John Dickerson, the other guy, the Chuck Todd guy. He'll have him on. But my point is, the podcast picture today is, hey, we didn't say hi to the other guy that just walked in. Hello, Mike. I make the delicious root beer. Oh, boy, I have some. Mm. So good. No, that's not Yoda, everybody. That is the brewmaster. Why would I be Yoda? Oh, boy. Yeah, you, you don't talk in that weird twisted backwards language thing that he does. You're all cool and stuff. But somebody else just walked in because he is in the drawing for today's podcast picture. Yeah, Mike, it's me, Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Wow. How do you do that? Do what? The thing with the do you know that? I don't know. I just ask that question a lot. Do you know that, Tourette's? Hmm. That's interesting. So I was listening to this guy that likes to hear the sound of his own voice that's on this other radio station i won't say his name but it rhymes with dan i'm gonna do that joke but he his i just when i hear him i go what a stick and i i probably don't say the word stick i say something a little less nice but he's such a stick and there are a lot of sticks in our world that are just such sticks and i just get sick of the sticks is all i'm saying but I was listening to the show I plug quite a bit on the radio podcast that's fake called Mike's Daily Podcast. It's called The Daily from the New York Times. And today, I only caught about five minutes of it. And it was talking about how so many people, so many people that should have done something when they heard about Nicholas Cruz... Some uh, the the shooter at the high school in Florida, 
Th so many people should have gone, oh, that, yeah, that's not good. Uh, we, we need to do something about it. Do you know which direction he ran or took off or in a vehicle? All right, this, this is an actual phone call, and they, they played this on today's show. And you know what? I'm going to bookmark this because this is such a good darn uh, show to talk about. They seem to catch. I know I mentioned it a lot. I was talking about they had Mona Charon on. Mona Charon from the whole thing that happened over the weekend. And who is now fighting a vicious, possibly fatal form of cancer. One person walked into a room. This is when she was talking about John McCain, how... Trump at the CPAC convention was talking bad about John McCain. When he was supposed to go this way, and he said he was going this way, and he walked in and he went this way, and everyone said, what happened? What was that all about? Boy, oh boy. Who was that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to be controversial, so I won't use his name, okay? I think what I am going to do, though, is take that Trump thing where he just said, what was that all about? That's going to be used for stuff. By the way, Michael Barbaro does a great job on the show. And his twit, tweet, his twit, his twit, by the way, <laughs> and that's the new catchphrase of the show is by the way, not, and my point is, it's by the way, my tweet, tweeter is at Mike Talks. But it used to be, when I first got on Twit, I'm going to call it Twit from now on. It's called Twit. Because it's for Twits. Uh, I wanted to call my Twitter, in fact, it was called, at the beginning, it was called Mike Tweets About Stuff, I think is what I called it. Mike Tweets About Stuff. And then I shortened it down to Mike Talks, and I got at Mike Talks. I could have had Matt, I did actually have at Matt Michaels, but I have not gone by Matt Michaels in t over 10 years, so screw that. But, okay, so Mona Charon, a conservative columnist, she was booed at the CPAC convention. We talked about her the last two shows, uh, and she pointed out, she got booed because she pointed out, hey, Trump, Trump bragged about extramarital affairs. There are a lot of women that have come out saying that he made passes at them. He's very Harvey Weinstein-like in that regard. What up? And how come he endorsed Roy Moore, who was everybody, all these allegations against him and such. So about sexual harassment and, and pedophilia type things. But what happened on the last show with The Daily, they were playing back the phone call that 911 got when Nicholas Cruz was at someone's house and punched up the house, like basically hit the walls, uh, punched the son of this woman who's on the phone. And he came in the house and started banging all the doors and banging in the walls. She tells wall. police that he's pissed off. That he's that, so that's the guy. He's the uh, R Richard Opal. He's the national correspondent for the Times. He's coming to the house. He's hitting the walls, banging the walls, going nuts in the house. And then Cruz punches her son in the face. Her son then tells him he needs to leave. And then uh, the call goes on, and he goes down to get a gun. He's got guns, apparently, this woman says to this 911 operator. So right there, and, and all this other stuff is coming out now about how Nicholas Cruz had guns and he was he was unruly and do it and then trump today or yesterday tweeted that hey yeah someone should have said something well, how did this get all passed up by fbi and everyone else and ooh, hey this story here about uh the sheriff in florida the, uh, said the broward county sheriff scott israel his statement about the number of times deputies were dispatched to the shooter's home. Sheriff says he got 23 calls about Nicholas Cruz's family, but records show more. Uh, and public records have emerged that conflict with Scott Israel's statements. Records obtained from the sheriff's office by CNN show the law enforcement agency received at least 45 calls for service relating to Cruz or his brother 
from 2008 to 2017. 45 calls. Oh, man. CNN has repeatedly asked the sheriff's office to explain the discrepancy, sending emails and attempting to reach an agency representative by phone. The agency has not responded to those requests with an explanation. Back on February 15th, CNN received a Broward County Sheriff's Office log based on public records requesting uh, public records requests showing 39 calls from Cruz's house over a six year period. 39 calls. I haven't gotten, I haven't called the police uh, ever. And I actually, I want to call Nate Miley, my local whatever he is. He's like our, uh, in charge of something public related because there's a street, the street that I live on, it narrows. And there's no sidewalk and people are walking on the street and cars are flying down this street at like 50 miles an hour and the speed limit is 25. It shouldn't even be 25. And there's going to be an accident. Someone's going to get hurt badly and there's something needs to be done. Speed bumps something. And Nate Miley, I've tried contacting once I did. I was over by his office because there was a coffee place I used to like to go to that was next door. And I used to walk my dog, Basil the Boxer, down there. And then the owner... Oops, I lost my mouse. My mouse fell down. Oops. That was... And then the, the, the I got blinded in the eye by the laser. From the mouse. Mice with laser beams. That's all I want. Sharks with laser beams attached to their heads. So this guy wanted to rent my room that I have. And he wanted to move in his bed. He's like, oh, and I got a girlfriend. And I, and I, I said, oh, okay. And I never told him no. And I should have gotten back to him. I just ignored him. And I stopped going to his coffee place. Because that's how I roll. But my wonderful roommate has been in there for almost three years. So that's a good thing. And, and a little applause for my roommate who's... <laughs> though sometimes loud... Yes, last night he was very courteous when he came home and I was asleep. I got to sleep almost eight hours. I was so, so happy because I need that at 547 in the morning. But uh, Nate Miley next to this coffee place. So I, I go over there. He's not in there. It's a tiny place. I don't even think he's still there. And I was, hey, there's a I walk in. I go my street. Cars are flying down it. Buses. Uh, it, it's a very s- small, narrow street, and cars are flying down it, and there's not even a dividing line down the street. I need something done. And she goes, oh, you need to go online, blah, 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 and fill out blah, 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 and blah, 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 and fill out that, and fill out this, and fill out the other thing, and then and triplicate, and, and so forth. Ugh. Busted eardrums. I didn't need to hear that. So another thing, and I said about everyone involved, what a stick. People who get their taxes done early. (laughs) What a stick. I do not understand people who can get their taxes done early. I'm a little jealous. I'm a little envious. I, I got, uh, I got a lot going on. Oh yeah, how much? A lot. And I, I, I just, I, there's no way I can get taxes done that early. Besides, there's a deadline. And you should, I, make use of the deadline. Get right up onto that deadline is what I say. Live life on the edge. That's what the edge is, is the deadline. Thus, the deadline. And my hero, Douglas Adams, who wrote Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, he and uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, and a couple of Doctor Who episodes, he said... The, I love the sound. I love deadlines. I love the sound they make as they, as you w- wish on by them, as they fly on by, something to that effect. And I quoted Douglas Adams perfectly, and I'm sure he would appreciate that. He died in Santa Barbara, working out. He was on a treadmill, and he died, just dropped dead, and that's sad. But he was in Santa Barbara, where he loved to be, and he was he was a man ahead of his time. He always thought of the future he was very walt disney-esque in that way always saw the next the next level saw beyond 
sort of a Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk in that regard. And he did this whole thing you can see at the Smithsonian. Uh, I th- which one is it? I think the Air Museum there in Washington, D.C., where there's a video running constantly of Douglas Adams talking about GPS and how wonderful GPS will be someday be because it did not exist at that point. And now we use it every... It's in our phones. Our phones are Hitchhiker's Guides to the Galaxies. That's what... His whole concept of what a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is, is our phone. He, Douglas Adams, I, wrote a, I, read a, I read a whole book about him, so... And I'll end it here, that this will blow your mind. He, at one time, was the... He was the first person to own a Mac in England. This is the truth. The first person. He was so into it. And then I think he had a game that was usable on Macs back in the day when we called him Macs. And Apple iPhones didn't... iPhones weren't around yet. So, back to... And did I say Apple? Hey, I have a new sound effect for that. There's a sound effect for that. Right? Is it right? Right? God. No, right... Here. Thank you. Uh... There, so there was a failure at all levels with the shooter. Um, and then I wanted to wrap up by saying Comcast wants to buy, speaking of England, wants to buy Sky. Sky is this huge television network. Rupert Murdoch has that going on in England as he has Fox going on here. Comcast wants to buy that. So does Walt Disney, NBC, all these other people want to buy it. But uh, now Comcast, wait a minute. Comcast owns NBC, right? I asked something like that. This is why I'm not hosting a show on talk radio, business talk radio. And then iHeartRadio, which you can listen to the show on iHeartRadio, by the way. And all the links and everything to the show, all the places you can listen to this are at mikesdailypodcast.com. As well as where you can help out the show through the PayPal. And if you're going to do any show, any shopping on Amazon, if you're looking at this website, mikesdailypodcast.com through Google's Chrome, make sure to take the ad block off because you won't see the Amazon icon that you can click on. But if you click on that and buy anything through Amazon, through mikesdailypodcast.com, that helps out the show. Wanted to mention that. And all the past podcast pictures and some cool interviews I did back when I used to like doing interviews before musicians really started to irritate me and irk me because they would never return my calls or emails or they would say they would talk to me when they would talk to me and I'd be all ready to go and they would not talk to me because they're narcissistic full of themselves musicians so that's why I stopped there are a couple that are true upstanding wonderful musicians that I still talk to that are still my friends and they are on the show regularly but not the I don't go out and actively look for musicians anymore oh and the record promoter people that would give me guests and give me crappy guests that's forget that that's done let's jump th- quickly through and that's all at mike's daily podcast.com uh so we mentioned that russian hack of uh, their stacy dash the girl who's 51 from clueless who still looks like she's 27 she wants to run for office in California, right here in our wonderful state. She has opened a federal committee to raise money to challenge California Democratic Re- Representative Nanette Berrigan, who represents a Los Angeles district where registered Democrats outnumber Republicans 61% to 10%. Stacey Dash, very uh, conservative, has been on Fox a lot of times and got into some controversy. I don't have time to jump into that, but she's beautiful. And she is going to run for that. So let's see what happens there. Uh, she has been teasing a political run recently on Twit. And then Bill Cosby sadly lost his daughter. He's also, he lost his son years ago, but uh, she was only 44. Enza Cosby died in Massachusetts. While the cause of death remains unclear at this time. She had a history of medical problems and was possibly awaiting a kidney transplant. Then gay workers are getting a win over Trump with the U.S. anti-bias, bias, I don't think that's how you say that word, bias ruling. Gay workers and their corporate sponsors, supporters won a legal victory over the Trump administration as 
a federal appeals court ruled that firing people over their sexual orientation is a form of illegal sex discrimination. The most evilest man on the world, Martin Screlly, responsible for $10.5 million in security scheme losses, a judge has ruled, and a significant blow to the fortunes of the, dis- of the disgraced pharma bro, Martin Screlly. A judge ruled Monday that Martin was responsible for nearly $10.5 million in losses in securities in a securities fraud scheme. And he faces up to 20 years in prison. He was the one that jacked up the prices for medicine that people need. And he's a real stick. As as we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. And that's basically it. Well, that was sort of a a rush at the end, but I think we got to some of the major points of what's happening in your planet world place. I'm going to be honest with you. I got stuck in a really crazy, sudden, impromptu rainstorm yesterday with Basil the Boxer. And there was lightning, light thunder, and imagine dragons everywhere. And it was just, it was... It was nice. It was fun. It was invigorating. It it was Bay Area. And it shows that you don't know sometimes what's going to happen, what's going to be right around the corner. The, di- uh, the, the walk started off warm, hot. I had uh, to uh, take off my wonderful, fashionable head hot cap wear to keep me my head hot and heated. And suddenly this rain and cold and cold biting wind popped up and lightning and and that's what life is like so just remember that and remember uh that if you don't believe in god you're going to hell that's apparently what i just heard on one of the other stations i work for so all kinds of interesting things and people telling you things and people that are sticks telling us things but i hope i told you some things that made you go oh Next show, we'll have the wonderful person called Madame Rita Vega, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Wonderful. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.